Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be telling you about sound waves more specifically uh, to do with pitch and amplitudes and what causes a sound. So, sound is caused by vibrations, okay? So, any object that vibrates is going to produce a sound and then you're going to hear the sound because the sound is going to travel through the medium where the sound is. So, it could be the air, so gas, a liquid in water or in a solid in a table, for example. So. What happens is you get the vibrations, the air molecules vibrate if the sound was created in air, and then different parts in your ear, the, um, like the ear drum, the tiny bones in your ear, and the cochlea, they all are going to vibrate, and then the cochlea turns the um, vibrations into electrical signals which are sent to the brain. So I'll replay this animation, which is from footprints, I cannot do animations. So air molecules vibrate, the ear drum vibrate, three small... Um, muscles, um, sorry, um, bones in the, in, the, in, the, in the ear vibrate and then the cochlea is going to turn the signals uh, so we, they can be interpreted by the brain, okay? So that's how sound um, is made. Now, you can try this if you get this tuning fork. So you can, if you have a tuning fork, hit on one of the sides of the tuning fork, not very loud, and then put this side into a material. Could be a table, a plastic, a box, it doesn't matter. You are going to hear the sound being transferred by, okay? And you very easily can see there is vibrations. You can put this part of the tuning fork um, in, in a beaker with water, and you see the water moving, so you see the vibrations, the the ripples and you can see that the sound is traveling through the tuning fork and can be transferred to other places by putting the end of the tuning fork into um um, into a, an object, okay, or a material. So sounds are made when an object vibrates. That's all that you need to do or to know by now, okay. Now, quick exercise. Uh, all things have a place where they vibrate where you can hear the sound. So I have here four different things and I want you to figure out what is vibrating there to make the sound. Pause the video if you don't want to get the answers right now and you want to try them. Otherwise, here are the answers. So the violin strings are the, the things that vibrate in the violin, the drum skin for the drummer, the voice box for a person, and the loudspeaker cone for a loudspeaker, okay? So whatever object that you're thinking about that is making sound, something there is vibrating, okay? Now, Sound needs particles to travel, and the closer the particles are together, the faster the sound is going to travel, because the faster or the easier the vibrations are going to be passed on from one particle to another. So this means that sound moves faster in solids than in liquids, and finally moves slower in gases. In space, there is no sound because there are no particles. So in the space, we are in a vacuum. So we, you should not be able to hear sound. So these, you know, movies with explosions in Star Wars and all that stuff, yeah, that part is scientifically incorrect, okay? So um, if you're watching this video because you have an exam or a test coming up, this is quite an important thing to know. So normally people need to explain where sound travels faster or why you cannot hear sound in a vacuum, okay? So make sure that you pay attention to this part. So let's supp so put here some, some questions, things that you should know by heart now. So where sound travels fastest and why sound travels fa uh, faster in solids? Because vibrations can be passed on in solids more easily than in liquids and gases. Why can't we hear sound in vacuum? Because there are no particles in vacuum, so there are no atoms to pass on the vibrations. What is the speed of sound in air? It's in fact 343 meters per second, but many times I see 340 meters per second, so I suppose you can leave it as that. And all these questions were things that came up in the past. So these are examples of questions you can be asked, okay? Now, sounds can be described by their pitch and amplitudes. Pitch has to do with the frequency of the sounds. Amplitude has to do with the loudness of the sounds. So amplitude is going to be seen, if you look at my other videos, about the height of the wave, okay? So this wave is taller than this wave, okay? So this wave has a higher amplitude, a wave A has a higher amplitude than signal B.
Pitch has to do with the frequency of the signal, so how many waves I can see passing through me every second. The frequency seems to be the same in these two um, diagrams or signals. So the question is, which trace represents the loudest sound? Well, loudness has to do with amplitude, amplitude has to do with the height of the wave. Trace A, or signal A, shows a larger amplitude, therefore is going to represent the loudest sound. So sound uh, A is the loudest, sound A has the greatest, uh, the greatest amplitude, which means the wave has more energy and so the sound is louder. In this one, which trace represents the sound with the highest pitch? Now you can have low pitch, which is like a deep sound, or high pitch, which is a high pitch sound, that's really how people say it. So pitch has to do with frequency. The higher the pitch, the higher the frequency. The more waves you see into the same amount of time. Trace A and B have the same amplitude, so they are equally loud. However, trace B has a, mo a higher frequency. You have more waves showing in the signal, so more waves passing through you each second. So trace B has the highest pitch, okay? So sound B is the highest pitched. Sound B has the shortest wavelength and the most number of waves visible. So it has the highest frequency. So this is how you can justify your answers, okay? In here, uh, this is from Footprint, so this is not mine. Uh, in here, you can uh, change the amplitude and the frequency. So I can make high amplitude. You can see that I have a louder sound. The waves are taller. I could increase the frequency and I would have now a loud, uh, high-pitched sound. I can decrease the frequency, have the same loudness but a deeper sound, or I can decide to decrease the amplitude and now the sound is quieter and deeper, okay? So loud sound is by increasing the amplitude, high pitch sound by increasing the frequency, a lower sound, so uh, it is a quieter sound maybe, uh, so quieter sound like this, or if they say lower because it's a deeper sound, then you would decrease the frequency, okay? So these are how, how all the signals would look like. All right, now, uh, this is how it would look if you could just take a print screen. So louder, longer amplitude, okay? Quieter, shorter amplitude. Deeper pitch, then the wavelength becomes bigger, meaning that you have less waves in that space, so frequency is lower. Higher pitch, the wavelength gets smaller, that means that you have more waves, a higher frequency in that period of time, okay? So, I just have a summary exercise now. So, uh, again, pause the video if you want to try by yourselves, which you should. Otherwise, uh, here are the answers. So, sounds are made when things vibrate. Vocal cords in your throat vibrate when you speak. The vibrations push the air particles, which produce sound waves. The vibrations are passed on when one vibrating particle touches another. The intensity of a sound describes the loudness of it. A sound with a high intensity is loud. A sound with a low intensity is soft. Sounds can be high or low. This is the pitch of a sound. A small bird sings with high-pitched notes. So that is it for sound waves in terms of pitch and amplitude. I hope it made sense and up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye.